Sometimes when you're making apps, you don't always want them to be white in the background. So in this video, we're going to look at custom paint and how we can make this custom background design that I just made in Figma. So stay tuned. I never want to stop learning, and this is why I'm using Skillshare. Skillshare provides over 22,000 lessons in multiple different subjects. Right now, I'm taking the time to learn more on design and also social media, as I've never been good with any of that. If Skillshare is something for you, consider using the link in the description to get two months of free use. When signing up, you are prompted to pay and after two months. But if you don't want to do that, you can also always use the concept of subscription and not pay anything. So don't wait, try it out now. The link is in the description and let's get started. So right here I have a simple counter project and I've already gone ahead and actually created a custom painter widget. So what I'm actually doing is I'm going to the body and wrapping all of the shielding that I'm using right here with a custom paint. And then the painter I'm actually using is a blue painter. And let's go to that. So a blue painter, we can create a similar one. Just tapping class. Painter. Or my painter. And then we're going to just extend the custom painter. This will actually let you implement the missing implementation, which will give you the should repaint and the paint method. So I will show that. And we can see right here. So I'm not going to use this one, but I will use that's just a fast explanation of how you create your first custom painter. I've gone ahead and set the should repaint to all delegate is not equal to this. So this is just to make us not rebuild this all the time and only rebuild it if we would actually change the paint. And I've also gone ahead and created the blue background for the whole page. So to do this, I started by creating the paint. And the paint is used for the color and where the actual paint will go. So we start by creating the path. Then we have the main background, which I used to call the path. We add a rectangle. We start from top left, which is zero in the width and zero in the height. And then bottom right, which is the full height and full width. We're then setting color to the shade of blue at 700. And then we just draw in the main background and the paint on the canvas. So now to get to the more hard to explain curve. We're actually going to create it down here. So if you have any questions about this path right or this uh, code right here, you can just hit it up in the comments and let me know. And let's create another path which will be for this, uh, this bubble or oval right here. So let's create that now. We're going to create a path with which we just give the name oval path. And as you can see up here, I also created two variables for the height and width. So I don't have to type out size.height and size.width all the time. We're going to start the paint. So if we look back here, we can see that we're painting from this point, which is fully to the left, and then something like 20% down the screen. And then we're going around to the bottom left. So let's just go to the first point. We're going to start to paint right here. So if you don't specify anything, the paint will actually start at the top left. And we'll start by calling the oval path. Call the move to, which starts a new sub path at the given coordinates. And we're going to set the move to, to uh, 0, 0. Or not zero zero, but zero to the uh, width, and then the height will be height times zero point two, which will just give us twenty percent of the height. And I will go ahead and comment this so you can read it if you don't follow along. So for the next part is that we're going to take this path right here. And we're going to create the first curve. 
So one hard thing to notice with this one is that when you create a curve, actually, if we would only create one curve and then have a point that it curves to, we would actually get a pretty sharp curve. So we're actually going to create two curves, which will just take half of it each. So for example, if I take up the paint, instead of getting this kind of curve, which just points to one direction, we're going to have a kind of curve that drags it out in two directions so we can get a more rounded curve. So what we're going to do is that we're going to just start a comment. So we're going to paint the first line to the middle of the screen, which will use a quadratic Bezier 2. So to show this, we're going to call the old path and we're going to call this method right here. And we have a quite a bit of uh, variables inside here. So we have a x2 and x or y2 and a x1 and y1. So let's just focus on the x2 and y2 first. These are actually the same as the coordinates right here. So that will just specify where we want to paint to. And we want to paint to exactly in the middle for now. So let's take the width, which is x. And just times it by 0.5 so we get 50% of the width and do the same with height now we are actually going to paint to the middle but now we actually want so if i used to show with a pen we're actually doing like something like this for now that's not completely straight but right now we are going this now we want the control points to pull it up to the top right so we can actually get a kind of curve for it. So to do that we're going to set the two control points and width of the first control point we will set something like we wanted to paint it something like here so let's set it to almost 50%. And the height we want to still set it to something like here, so the height will be like 20-25%. And if you don't get these values right from the start, it doesn't really matter. You can always tweak them and see when you can get the right curve. So if I would save this. To start off, to show the paint, we're going to call paint.color so we can set a color for it. And then we're going to draw it on a canvas. So now we can see that we're starting at 20% height and we're going down to the middle with a curve. And then you can also see that we have this line going back here. And that's what it automatically does. And what we're going to actually do now is start with the second curve, which will go back to the bottom left. I will actually start by copying this right here and we're going to add a comment. So this is, uh, says that we want to start with the curve and it should go to somewhere like here, the full height of the screen and then 10% or so to the right. So something like that. So to do that, we're going to set the width to 10% to the right. And then we're going to have the full height. So right now we have the full curve going something like, let's just remove this. Right now we have something like this. So now we want the actual curve. So we can see that it right away draws it to something like uh, bottom right. And that will be the control points. So to start off with the first control point, we're going to set the width to, to a bit more this time. We're going to set it to something like here at this point or this uh, horizontal point. 
something like 60% of the width. The height will then be pretty, pretty much the, the mirrored of the last one, but at the bottom. We're going to set something like 0 0.8. Right now we can see that we have a curve. And I'm just going to change this so I can get a value that I more like. Yeah. So now we have a bit better curve. So for the next line, we're going to actually paint it just to the le bottom left side. And the bottom left side is just the width of zero and height of the full height. And to do this, we just call the oval path and the line to method and the width will be zero and the height will be the full height. And then we're going to do one more thing, which is we're going to call our oval path and then close it. And this closes the last sub path as a straight line back to to the first point that we draw from. And I'm just going to separate this so it's a bit easier to read. And if we save this, we should see that the full curve is now working. So right now we have the background that we're looking for. So let's just show that side by side. We can actually remove this top app bar. There we go. So now we can see that we got a pretty similar curve. We got the background, which is a full quadratic blue background. And then we got the blue circle painted above here. So if we look at the code again, this is very handy because we only set a widget and then the painter, and then we just continue building the children. So a a good way of spicing up the design is using a custom paint and I recommend it for a lot of things. And I hope you liked this tutorial. If you liked it, please let me know by subscribing to the channel and give a thumbs up. And also comment down below if you have any questions. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.